In this video tutorial, we're going to look at the basic type of retrieval query in SQL called the select query. It's called the select query because it uses the select keyword. And I'm going to be looking at the select keyword as well as the from keyword. And I'm going to put in criteria based keywords here as well, where and like. For more information on this series of tutorials, if you look at the introductory video, and that link is up on the right of the screen right now. So here we are in our home zone database. I see all of the seven different tables that I have, and I want to start writing an SQL command. So I'm going to jump into the command area. As I said, the select keyword is all important. And generally with an awful lot of the selective or retrieval type of queries that we have in SQL, select is the first word that goes into the query. And what we're saying to the SQL server is, I want you to go in and be selective, select a number of different records from a particular area in the database and bring them back to me. When we go to select, the next thing that I'd like to put in here is if I want all of the different fields to come back from a particular table, I put in the keyword or key symbol called all. So this is an asterisk, but again, anybody who's writing SQL, they read it as the word all. So select all of the different fields, from is another keyword in SQL, and you'll see as I'm going through here in Adminner, all of the different keywords in SQL, they all uh, become bold and navy. And then lastly, I type in the name of the table that I want to take these records from. So I'm going to start off with just the staff table. And again, I can see all of my different seven tables over here. Staff is just one of them. So select all from staff. I'm going to click on execute and we see the results there. So at the moment, I've got six different records and I see all of the different fields, staff number, first name, last name, all the way to branch number at the very end. And just to point out some of the significance of some of these fields, staff number is obviously a primary key. That's a code that uniquely identifies every record. And then we've also got branch number at the end. And that obviously is a foreign key that relates into the primary key in the branch table. And just to show you that, I'm going to click in here, rather than having select all from staff, I can just quickly say select all from branch and execute. So we see the branch table here, and we see similar type of numbers that we saw in the branch number foreign key in the staff table, now here as the primary key in the branch table. So let's go back to staff here for a moment. And once we look at the staff table, what else can we do here with this query? Well, instead of all the asterisks, I can actually replace that with specific field names. So if I just want the first name and last name of each of the different employees, well, I can just take away the asterisk and put in F name, comma, L name. That is the name of the different fields. And uh, I will just press execute on that. And I'm getting the exact same number of records, but here I'm only showing the fields that I've asked for. Notice that the grammar of SQL is very similar to English. We only separate adjacent field names with a comma, but the very last field name, we don't put in a comma, we just go straight into the keyword from. And we can add to that wherever we want. I want to add in the position of these employees as well. I can. And I can actually put in the fields in any sequence that I like. It doesn't have to be in the exact same sequence as they're actually laid out in the structure of the table. So if you're working as a data analyst, it's quite important to think about the way that you're presenting this data to whoever your audience is and how they might perceive different fields laid out in particular ways. And that's the select query, your basic type of retrieval query in SQL. Now, what about if we want to make it a little bit more sophisticated in that we don't want to take all of the different records back from a particular table. We want to have some type of selection for it instead. So I'm going to go back. I'm just going to put back in all here just so we can see all of the different fields. And now I'm going to put on a little suffix at the end of this selective query and put in a where criteria. So a where clause. So after the table name, I can put in where, and then I put in some type of criteria where the SQL server can evaluate and see if records should be returned or not. So in this case, I'm going to just have employees whose salary is greater than 30,000. So where, Salary is the name of the field greater than 30,000. Let's execute that. And we can see I've just got three records being returned. I'm taking a quick eyeball there on the salary field. And I can see all of the salaries there are above 30,000. Let's swap that greater than to a less than. And we should see the other three different fields. 
Now the example that I'm just after showing here is based on a numerical field. That's what salary is. It's showing us an actual number. But if we're actually putting a criteria on a field that is a text field, we have to do something slightly different. For instance, if I want to say where position, which is a text field, and I want to maybe just bring back managers, where position, I need to use the keyword like there because it's a text field. Position like, and because I'm dealing with text, I need to wrap the value in quotes. So in quotes and manager and close quotes. So let's execute that. And here we see the manager is coming back. So let me just wrap this onto the next line. So we can see where position like manager, like the keyword for when we're using text fields and just the normal type of comparison operators like greater than or less than when we're using number fields and so on. Just a few final notes. You'll notice I'm putting all the keywords in SQL in uppercase. This is a recognized standard of SQL, but it's not essential. You can write them in lowercase and it will still work. More often than not, I see SQL written in uppercase because it's easier to decipher it from other code that might be placed around it. So for example, you might have a query based in a web page that might be pulling information back from a database. Rather than confuse the SQL with the other types of languages around it, it's a good idea just to keep to the standard and keep your SQL keywords in uppercase. Second thing to point out is that even though uppercase or lowercase keywords don't really matter, the other things do matter most of the time, depending on your SQL server. For instance, the table names. If I actually misspell the table name with a lowercase s, and that's not the way it's spelled in the database, you'll actually get an error saying that the lowercase s version of the table name doesn't exist. However, if I move that concept down to the field name and I change the field name or the case of the field name and execute, it actually will work. But again, it depends on the SQL server. Again, reminding you that the SQL server that I'm using here is just my SQL. So that's the basic construct of a select query along with the criteria keywords where and like. This video is part of a playlist of videos that deal with all the different aspects of SQL. In the next video, I'm going to deal with the order by keyword.